Yay! So I think it's probably important uh, that as the Ivory Feathers community, we sing happy birthday. Now, oh no! <laughs> happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> happy birthday! Lovely! Happy birthday! You. Thank you. That was oh, nice. That was nice. Choreographed. <laughs> I hope that was recorded. Uh, I can see you waving, Camilla. You you had your off <laughs> your off screen hand up. <laughs> but Helen's away. <laughs> Helen has her hand up. Um, I think I'm going to come to Helen this week. She seems confident. A swan. A swan. A swan is swan. A <laughs> That's a lovely swan. On our bell boating, we have we've written into the risk assessment that if we agitate the swans by uh, getting too close to them, particularly when they're uh, nesting or, or particularly um, agitatable, uh, we, we have a particular procedure. We put the paddle into the boat. We move our fingers out of the way. We turn our faces. Um, into the middle of the boat to stop our, the children getting their faces pecked off, which is difficult because um, the paperwork accompanying that kind of injury is oh. <laughs> You don't want that. <laughs> I nearly had a swan experience today. It, we were heading straight for one, but actually it moved out of the way and the children noticed its feet underneath. So we actually... just down River of the Lock? Yes. Yes, we came shooting out of the weir pool and then avoided avoided the fisherman's line, avoided a narrow boat, and then there was a swan. <laughs> and it was all a bit exciting. <laughs> we were still at the heron at that point, but we saw you and the narrow boat. We saw you disappear into the reeds. And then the next time I looked, there was a massive narrow boat. And I just looked at the rest of the children. I went, I don't think we're going to see Mrs. Smart again. <laughs> <laughs> We should probably clarify, Helen, you, I suspect you mean a mute swan, which is the one that we yes. all know, uh, as opposed, and this is known by its orange beak and beak knob, I'm sure there's another word for it. Beak what did you call me? <laughs> uh, and then it, it's not the Buick or the Hooper swan, which are a bit more uh, yellowy beaks, and also they don't exist except in books. Hooper! A Hooper swan, yeah. Have you never heard of a Hooper swan? It's called it a whopper swan. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are big. So um, yeah, yeah, Buicks and Hoopers are both smaller and very vocal, and they um, they're almost goose-like, which is why the big Cygnus olor that we're familiar with is called the mute swan because in flight, it's its wings that do all the calling for it. You've probably heard that throbbing yeah. sound that they make. Interestingly enough, at the moment, my neighbours molt their flight feathers at different times so the the pen will molt her feathers out when the signets are small because she doesn't have to fly and then um she regrows hers and then the cob drops his so there's always somebody who's fully flighted and ready to go into battle at the at a moment's notice let's get some notes then to accompany the swan c a d sharp g
done. Absolutely. Yeah. It, was, it, it was very filmic. It, 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 it would serve as a, a company, a, a love story film, yeah. I thought. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, a, a, like a Williams. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine the film. There's a young Tappers. Uh, there with the swan and you know <laughs> sort of lifelong love of birds and the it, it's yeah like a, one with the wind it was lovely really lovely the really swan flew really over the nest <laughs> <laughs> the, the nice thing and and it it was the same with the skylark piece that mm. it was very evocative of the environment with the bird in it 